So in this video, we'll address something you might have been wondering about for a while. How do I control more advanced hardware? So life isn't all about buttons and LEDs. I want to build a robot. It's going to have sensors and motors and who knows what else. So how do I do a more complicated circuit like what you see here, where we have a passive infrared sensor. So this is a sensor that uses infrared light to detect motion. You'll see these in things like home security systems. And we have a motor, which, as I mentioned in a previous video, isn't being driven directly from one of the Arduino I.O. pins. It is being driven through a transistor and has an external power supply that can provide more current than the Arduino pins can. So we're not going to explain how transistors work in this video. This That's a topic for another day. So for now, you'll just have to take for granted, if you don't know how transistors work, that this is allowing me to control the larger amount of current flowing through this motor from the battery using a tinier signal from the Arduino's I.O. pin. And when I run this, you can see Tinkercad lets you click on the PIR sensor and simulate motion by dragging this dot around in front of it. So when I move the dot around, it lights up and you'll see that its output voltage on the signal pin here changes to 5 volts from 0 volts. And you'll also notice that when I do that, the motor starts spinning. So there's a slight delay when I stop moving, the sensor signal stays high for a little bit, but otherwise then the motor stops once the sensor signal is no longer high. So you might look at this much more complicated circuit than what you saw previously with buttons and LEDs and think that the code is also going to be need to be more complicated. But it turns out you can do this with the exact same code you saw in a much earlier lesson using a pin change interrupt to monitor a button press to light an LED. So this is a really important key takeaway that you can add a more complicated circuit with larger, higher power devices or sensors that aren't just a button. But look at over here, the interface to the Arduino is still just two wires. So the interface here and the code you are using to control, we only have one output signal and one input signal. This code is not any different than the code you saw for the button and the LED. So even though our circuit is more complicated and we have more things connected, we have a single input signal. This is just a digital high-low from our PIR sensors. So that is going to change from high to low. It's going to have rising and falling edges. We can monitor that using a pin change interrupt, which we set up with our PCICR and PCMSK2 registers, just like you saw in an earlier video. And then we just have a single output signal that is no longer driving an LED directly, but now it's driving the base of this transistor. So again, that is just setting that pin to an output using the data direction register and then toggling it in the pin change interrupt. So everything you've learned so far, even though it was just using buttons and LEDs as an example, you can expand to more advanced hardware when you're doing something like building a robot. So again, there is no specific assignment for this video, but what you can do is play around with the variety of sensors available in Tinkercad. Some of these don't just have a simple digital high-low output, so they won't work with the demonstration you saw here, but try picking some different sensors and implement some logic to control a motor that doesn't necessarily have to use a pin change interrupt like I did here. It could use a external interrupt or timers to have something on for a certain amount of time once a sensor is triggered, etc. So experiment with the more advanced behaviors you can get using additional hardware, but the code you have already learned. 